I'm no, not. no, no. Oh, sorry, please. One moment. I will give you. No. Right. Wait, now it's good. It's good. It's good now. Yeah. Working. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Now it's okay. Welcome. Окей, okay. хорошо. Uh, я долгое время был клиническим психотерапевтом. Окей, okay. I have been clinical uh, psychotherapist. I worked in crisis centers and clinics in the USA, but in parallel I worked with body-oriented medicine and breathing tools of psychotherapy. This is my first love as assistance tools. And you know, Every year I see more and more discoveries in breathing techniques and for the last five years I have seen a lot of them because there are neurophysiological research and surveys and it helps also to develop our body-oriented medicine. Given the fact that we discussed with Katya what we are planning to do today and as far as I understand what can suit to the topic of our meeting i think that we will dwell on some tools and some approaches how to help our clients and to help how to help ourselves in the short term and here i think this will be breathing techniques and breathing tools and rapid resource therapy but also i will take into consideration your requests because you know i'm not fully in the context and they do not know what like links you all together so maybe you can say something or i will understand it yeah so if you want we can just talk about it because here there are colleagues from colleagues with the experience of positive psychotherapy and positive psychotherapy is integrated method but body and breathing techniques these are a separate approach that should be linked when we work with the crisis and emergency situations etc so in any case we understand that this topic these tools are really very decent and relevant Okay, so methods for self-assistance, self-help, and also that it can be useful for our clients, especially in crisis situation. Because since the year 2000, I have been working with crisis situation. When I moved to the USA, I found myself in work with trauma, with crisis, in rapid field adaptation, and from clinical... Uh, therapy i distance a bit and i started to work with some you know psychological difficulties not clinical disorders so i then also the 2013s 2014s year came and it was really difficult to live in in the country and me and some other my colleague they moved to the to the other country because you know we psychotherapists we feel it we not only understand it but we really feel it we live it through i remember that during the year 2014 i took participation in different volunteer projects and i had also my separate projects and before the outbreak of full-scale war i was ready and from the second day and i had to face the situation that me and my experience we were not ready to the situation that was in ukraine and that's true i think that my colleagues will will say that majority of psychotherapy that we have started they are oriented on the safety and security so this is about the past that we can live in the situation we can live it through but here we see it's not it's quite another situation there was big project 
were 10, 20, and even 50 people were in group in Zoom meeting, and we had to follow, we have to see the dynamics of the group because these people were properly on the traumatic bomb because there were people who also came to these Zoom meetings from temporarily occupied territories. And you see all these reactions, all these responses from numbness to excessive emotions and restlessness and panic attacks and panic reactions, all this was on the super were superfluous and we had to regulate them at using different techniques and different tools. So we had to adapt to the situation. We had to organize this. And also I had, because of this, I had to go to Instagram because I understood that I should promote all this. And given the fact that there was this adaptation and organization of this assistance, there were a lot of different results, interesting hypotheses, interesting approaches. And I would say that there are some small tools that help us to pull ourselves together to regulate our stress and shock reactions and we need it to cope with other life difficulties and not to be in distress but though we should be ready for different obstacles we cannot take the fact that psychotherapy is done only when a person is in safety security and stability here we have another reality and here we should also imply our existential vision because my life isn't here how to live how to live when evil and negative emotions win you know this was a big thing that in impacted the people who were in the under this condition and our body terror, our body fear, intolerance, how to live is really very important. We should adapt, we should adjust to different situations constantly, especially to the situations when there is no certainty for quite a long time. That's why I think that we should pay our attention to the very fast and rapid active tools. So, we should understand what is okay for us and what is too excessive for us. And we can also try these tools and understand how do they function. So, we will talk about our body-oriented therapy, we should understand what's going on in our body during the stress reactions. For example, now neurophysiological new concepts are included there. And polyvagal theory has also been, been included. I will send you an article about it, about this theory and you will understand what is it about and how it can be implied practically. And also psychodynamic methods and uh, therapy for trauma also. So this is about theory, but now we will do, we will use these tools. So when we talk about the stress reactions, one of the effects to adopt to stress is not to fail is just to become numb, to freeze, to be under tension, to tolerate it under tension. These are really easy things, but we should find out how not to feel it in some distress and some difficult situations. And I think that I will teach you some drills and exercises that we can do we can research together with you and you can possibly include it in your practice. 
So, please be involved, emotionally involved when you do, when you perform these exercises. So from the very beginning, try to feel how you do you breathe? How deep can you breathe? So whether your breathing is limited or it is full, so you can breathe in and breathe out. Can you do a sigh? Can you get relaxed? And just let it go. I mean, let it go, this control, this tension. And in this simple things, we do not only note them mechanically, but we understand, we are aware of why we are doing it. We are doing it for relaxation, yes, but, yes, breathing we understand, there are different types of breathing, and now we are trying to understand what is our type. So together with breathing, we can understand how much we can get relaxed and what is our attention in the body. Please breathe. Be aware of your breathing. And when we are talking about stress reactions and responses, there are things that we can take note of. So when people are tense, when people are just, you know, pulled together, this is like numbness. Numbness, not only physical, but also mental. People cannot dissociate their attention. They have tense shoulders, tense neck. And yes, neurophysiology of stress tells us about the same, that these are primary stress reactions. I mean, these are security, safety, and survival reactions. And they were explained by Sigun Porges by his polyvagal theory. And a lot of people who say that it's okay, I'm quite okay, but in the body of these people, we see that it's not okay. In these responses, by the responses, we see that the body is properly in the form, in the, you know, mode of survival. We can do it, we can live in such a mode, but it affects our lifestyle and our health. In some problematic strategy, we can get stuck for years and we live through again and again through these difficult situations. It means that we do not, we are not neuroplastic. Our neuroplasticity becomes less and less and neuroplasticity is related to our flexibility and to our mental health. So now I will give you exercise we will do them together and then we will discuss how we can use these exercises how we can use for him we can use for whom we can use them so please let's do them together just to understand whether they are suitable for us for our clients now just try so we are trying to breathe in very slowly and very deeply to understand what is the depth of your breathing. Do you feel the limitations of your breathing? For example, when you're breathing too deeply, when you overcome some general limits. Can you just relax? Be relaxed, relax. Relax your shoulders. Understand whether your shoulders and your neck are relaxed like this when you breathe in and breathe out. Can you do it under the state of relaxation? And can you do a sigh? So as if you, you know, you are just do the sigh and you relieve the tension. Just try it. Again, breathe in. I understand that it's a bit unusual, too sensitive, too open. 
And, you know, with clients, it's not worth to breathe so deeply from the very beginning. You know, when I meet the client, at first I listen to him, then I think what to do with him, and I say that, you know, there are some exercises that can help you to decrease the level of tension and to find the balance in your neural system when you use them regularly. And also these exercises will help you when there is like too much everything in your life. It's not psychotherapy, but it will give you some relief. And you will understand that your neuroplasticity is returned and you can use your rational mind. But now, for example, when we are doing this exercise, when we are doing it with our clients, we can see the body reactions of our clients. We, see, we can see which strategy to take. Like maybe we can again to do these exercises or maybe we can use some other approach. So my first exercise that I give to clients, it is the very simple resonance breathing. This is quite a secure approach to get relaxed, to readjust neural system and also to psychoeducate yourselves, to understand physically your reactions of stress to your body. So, breathe in for five seconds, breathe out for five seconds, and again and again during five minutes. It's a general protocol. So, let's try. Breathe in five seconds, breathe out five seconds. Breathing in during five seconds, breathing out during five seconds. So, it can be four or six, but more or less five seconds. And just, just do it, continue, continue this breathing and make aware of what's going on in your body from the first minutes. And here we can say what's going on in, other, in our bodies. For example, a person who adjusts themselves and switches off his or her feelings, this person says that nothing happens during such breathing but you know we should feel it we should know how to feel it because we are used to take decisions to do something etc but we should pass to this security mode when we feel that we are secured i shouldn't be ready to attack to freeze to fight i can get relaxed and i can be in contact. So, if you listen to me and if you continue this breathing in and breathing out, it means that we like have this focusing on different things. So, when we do this slow breathing in and breathing out, it means that our acid alkaline balance changes and in a couple of minutes you will feel some warmth but some people can also have a slight anxiety and hyperventilation. If it happens, please tell me about it. And if you continue to breathe like this for three minutes, your acid alkaline balance becomes more alkaline. And you understand that there is some health effect. And we know that Dr. Buteyka, he made a career on this understanding. But during his times, his method wasn't fully discovered with some side effects. But today we have another situation. We understand that there are some scientific approaches, how to find out the right method to breathe. So this type of breathing, five second breathing, we use during four or five minutes and while you are doing it you are learning how to get relaxed and this is an alternative to stress thinking because under the stress person can be focused only on one thing he or she cannot focus on a couple of different things and experiments have prone 
have proved that this slow breathing helps because physiological responses become less traumatic so people do not feel themselves helpless and survival mode is in balance with rational mode so this is you know like stress reactions versus health reactions because when you are too long when you are activated in this survival mode for too long you do not understand why there is this safety mode and why there is this stress mode because when we are under stress in a short term our body and our organisms works better but when it continues for quite a long term then we lose our neuroplasticity so we should be aware of our breathing we should be here we should understand i'm here i'm in contact and now you're breathing like this and you understand that your attitude towards your worrying and considerations are more flexible and under the protocol it should be uh, five minutes three times a day during one month this is the protocol and then you have this habit so when you are worried have this slow breathing this habit is really very powerful and it gives you more plasticity more flexibility in resolution of different issues and it will give you the balance to the stress reaction and the most interesting thing happens on the third and fourth minute because when you breathe in your heartbeat becomes more rapid when you breathe out there is slowing down in your heartbeat and when we look at special medical devices and Katya has told you about them we see on special medical devices medical parameters that we see the curve of the heartbeat that becomes you know more stable we see that it's like like a music like jazz or rugby something like this and the research in different spheres of neurophysiology proved that this heartbeat is associated with good stress resistance when the heart becomes more rapid and then slower with your breathing so we feel better and our mind becomes more flexible and even the research of people who are in dangerous situations for example people who are on the front line and research has showed that people who have such a heartbeat they can face and can cope with different challenges better and they rehabilitate better they uh, not so often have ptsd and disorders and this habit is manageable so we can train ourselves for it so three times a day for five minutes please do it well if you are under the stress you can do it 10 minutes not five so five seconds for breathing in five seconds for breathing out and this is really very simple technique so you can remember it you can understand the physiology of stress the theory of stress and you can feel yourself but also not to become too vulnerable but there are people who cannot breathe in even during the five seconds and we pay attention to it because there is this freezing reaction of body to be grouped to be numb to be switched off these responses are really very very strong and we have to recognize these reactions and we should help this patient because we understand that there is too much stress and we just 
shift reaction from the clinical revalidization. For example, we don't say, oh my God, you have PTSD, it's clinical state, etc. But we say that you have just too much stress in your body. And we explain it to our patient about sensitivity, about stress accumulation, etc. And we say, okay, let's start with two seconds breathing in, two seconds breathing out, and then three seconds, four seconds, etc. And all the resistance reactions we use like validization, like understanding that it's okay, it just so this is the stress reaction, it just proves that you are having stress. And what I like about this tool, this is manageable. So when we return for ourselves this method, this tool that we can get relaxed with such five second breathing, it will be better for our client. This exercise is really good because it has very scientific base. So you can remember it, but still it doesn't provide powerful effect we cannot do it, we cannot provide any response and reaction in short term. But sometimes we need properly short term tools. But you know that there are some things like automation, like yawning, as you see. Yes, there is yawning, you see that I'm yawning now. And this is our natural reaction and sigh, another. Another reaction is sighing. So when we see that somebody is yawning, we also want to yawn. And you know, this is wonderful because one of the deepest modes, how to get relaxed, natural mode, I mean, just yawn. We can learn how to yawn intentionally, just teach your body to do it. And this will be the wonderful tool. Even pharmacology cannot give you so relaxation, so big relaxation result. So please try it. Even if you feel that it's not very gentle, it's strange, etc., you do not think how to yawn, but try it. Don't be serious, you know, being serious, being too serious can give you some burning out. Just be a person, be a normal person. Do not have, you know, this, this mask, this professional shell. Take it off. Because you must be natural and also your clients will be natural. Just try to yawn. Try to yawn. At first try. Artificially. Just open your mouth and do like this as if you are yawning. And then after yawning, breathe out. And try to do it a couple of times. Like you see, yawning and sighing, yawning and sighing. It can be five, 10 times. Or just one time, but just do it in a row a couple of times. Because yawning, what yawning gives us, you know, it's really very natural thing. Because from this position of being closed in a shell, being hidden in a shell, not to breathe, not to feel, to be like half under depression, etc., it uncovers you, it relaxes all the upper body of all the upper part of our body, it opens our breathing. And it gives us very full relaxation. And what we're talking about, that our neck gets relaxed because our neck, you know, is very linked to our mind because we see a person who have tense neck, they are inclined to some anxiety responses because this is the part between heart and mind. It is about control. The neck corresponds to control. You know, it's like control freaks. And control freaks, they are properly can be seen because of very tense 
neck. But when we are yawning, we get relaxed. But what I found out after, it's really more interesting. You know, when we are yawning, we press our vagus, our, you know, binding nerve that commands from our amygdala, from our uh, limbic system, what to do to become numb, to freeze, to fight, to flee. So this is our vagus, vagus nerve. So you can press this vagus nerve with yawning. And you know, any type of passionate breathing also activates this vagus. And you will see that it really activates it. Yawning. Next, next approach is sigh. When so at first, when you yawn, we can open our upper part of the body. We can breathe in because when we freeze, it's really very really natural reaction, but. Also, our mind becomes numb and our body suffers because there is no energy, there is lack of breathing. And you see that we do not feel it physically. And our internal regulator some, sometimes is really afraid of feeling. Because the regulator, our internal regulator said that if you start feeling, you will have a lot of reaction, reactions, negative reactions. And yawning is really quite a great formula just for getting relaxed. Because, you know, a person who is sitting at the edge of the traumatic vortex, we understand that each think can provoke an explosion from internal like yawning but from other point of view when we yawn we can just you know release our emotions one by one just briefly tell you the theory of body oriented therapy so now please do it and then in the recording you can re-listen it and then to understand so we are yawning we press our vagus nerve and the, uh, the amygdala sends the signal to all the bodies that are related through with this vagus nerve. So this is the heart that regulates pressure and the bloody, uh, blood vessels, then lungs and muscles that are involved into breathing, then our intestinal system and endocrine system and our uterus system. And in all the programs we can see the, in all the projects, uh, they tell us about the relationship between the vagus and the amygdala. And we understand why when we are long under the stress condition, our body starts to react properly with these, with these body parts and organs that I have enumerated and 90% of our psychosomatic disorders are related to this vagus nerve. So these are uh, cardiovascular, endocrine and breathing system and even our skin that is related to endocrine system is also involved. And when, for example, we have reaction that there is danger you shouldn't think, you should react. Then our cortex, with the logics, that isn't, doesn't get involved. Because if we have a room with very advanced people and the tiger comes into the room, all these people get frozen, even if they are really too smart. So when the amygdala is activated, we are frozen and we crave for survival. And the amygdala commands just one of these three reactions, uh, fight, freeze, free. So the vagus sends the signal command to organs and they react. And if it 
happens very often and for quite a long time it can grow to the psychosomatic disorder so this is was brief theory how we sh uh, why it is important to find this vagus nerve so we can yawn and we can sigh we relax our neck we return our pl plasticity not only in our neck but also in our mind and we activate our vagus that sends a signal that it's not a so big danger we can resolve it we can do some decision etc like and you see when we are yawning for two minutes it can activate our serotonin system and it is you know it's the golden rule of our system you know when we rise raise the level of serotonin it's really very good thing and you see this is one of the desires to do through taking antidepressants etc but antidepressants are not enough that's why we should understand that this is really very important tool for it and, and here just you see a couple of minutes and the system will be activated if you yawn for a couple of minutes you will see how your mood is changing you understand that your muscles get relaxed and even if you haven't noticed so even if you haven't noticed the tensions in your body then you will understand where uh, where these tensions were because they get relaxed and after such exercise also we can pass to some questions to our client or maybe we can explain why we are doing this and how it works how it functions so i offered you to unblock the stress reaction so this resonance breathing breathing in five seconds breathing out five seconds three times a day you can do it at least one month or a couple of months and this resonance breathing despite being so simple people that are in close uh, that are inclined to sympathetic response anxiety with anxiety with impulsive they become calmer but people who are inclined to parasympathetic response they become more involved and you know physiologically we can think about the fact that our heartbeat is variable because there is activation when we breathe in and it activates our sympathetic neural system arousal rapid response and when we breathe out there is activation of parasympathetic neural system relaxation or just switching off but what is important i will return also to the polyvagal theory by the way so put something in the chat so do you know what is polyvagal theory just put plus if you know about it put question if you don't question mark if you do not know about it so this is just because i should understand whether whether you know about it or no you know i would ask you maybe very briefly tell us about this polyvagal theory okay i will do it in a very concise manner so this theory tells us that the residents of our depressive aggressive and anxiety neurotic responses is limbic system of our brain and the right lobe of our amygdala and we know that a person has childhood trauma this trauma can be even uh, so this lobe of amygdala can be even bigger and when people live through some difficult 
situations with helplessness, it means that in amygdala there is raised activity. And this part gives sense of signal that you are in danger, you should survive. We know about it. And we know that this amygdala gives the signal just for this 3F, freeze, flee, or fight. So to understand what to do, or just get involved, get activated, or to become too relaxed, or even to go to depression. And this is the core of all the neuro neural reactions that we face. It can be depressive, psychosomatic, anxiety responses, and so on. Like, this is very brief theory, and Stephen Porges determined that this vagus nerve that sends this activation or deactivation signal has three branches that regulate different scenarios. They command to body and to mind how to react on situation and how to evaluate the situation from the mind perspective. And people who in difficult situation have advanced sympathetic part of neural system, they are more activated, they are more prone to restlessness, irritation, because they understand that they have to do something. But people who have other aspects, like lower part of vagus nerve, that is responsible for deactivation. Like you can do nothing. You should just feel less switch off your reactions etc so the first part of people they are more prone to uh, neurosis and impulsive reactions and the second part to more are inclined to depressive reactions it can be like apathy or angry depression like when i hate everything and everybody i do not want doing something so these are passive reactions it can be numbness, it can be just lying in bed, etc. But Stephen Poor just says that there are three branches. The lower branch that we relate to these depressive reactions of parasympathetic system is under the diaphragm, the medium branch is related to breathing uh, organs and to heart, like preparation for doing something. And the upper branch goes to the, to the organs that are responsible for communication. And it turned out that calmness is not, is not an opposite to the anxiety. But the opposite to anxiety will be communication, natural reaction. And sympathetic and parasympathetic system, they are related. These both branches are related to heart. But one of these branches, you know, it's like um, acceleration and brake in the car. So when we train uh, our breathing technique, our system becomes adaptive, adjusting, and flexible. You see, I even changed my voice just to make it clear the discovery of Stephen Porges that upper ventral parasympathetic branch of vagus nerve is related to security and comfort. Well, it's not about the switching off, but just relaxation, relaxation of your, not only body, but the relaxation of your soul. This is emotional contact. And here we have association of this variable heartbeat. And it turns out that people with high variability of heartbeat, these are contact people, hearty people, people with big soul, people with high social and emotional intellect, intelligence, people who can be sincere in the expression of their emotions. And it's easier for them to live through stress and different obstacles. Because you know, in our cultures, all the heroes are 
people without contacts that do not undergo stress, etc. But in reality, we see that people who are con who have contacts, who are more sociable, they easier face different stress. They have less stress disorders. And in our case, we can relate, link this breathing and this polyvagal theory with our voice. And if majority of us knows about breathing techniques from yoga, from mindfulness, and we know that they make us calm, they make us more indifferent, etc. But here we have quite a different concept. So this concept is also present in some spiritual practices, but only polyvagal theory tells us about voice, tells us about soul. And when we are talking to a person, we can understand through his or her breathing and through his or her reactions, whether he or she feels themselves in security with us through different micro reactions, through vividness and relaxation of our mimic muscles, voice, breathing, they resonate with our soul and spiritual state. We create this security system and we relate it to our sensitivity. And when we are talking about it, we understand that polyvagal theory reflects our habits, our defensive mechanism, but it also gives us the hint where are our vulnerability. It helps us to understand what is the norm, what we can read, and it also tells us that person, a human, shouldn't live by himself. We need communication, we need other people, we need touch. We need people who can just listen to us. And this is not informational com communication, it's more soul communication. We need at least 30% of our time to be in this security state at least each day, at least a couple of days in a week to have time with another person with whom we can have this co-regulation, as Stephen Porter says, that we regulate each other. Because he says that people are not created to live by themselves. We need other people to feel better. And thanks to this, we can at least 30% of our time be physiologically in security state when our neural system doesn't work in survival mode and our organism doesn't get exhausted and feels better and there is linkage between the immune system and constant stress through different research so what can we do we can use all these drills, all these exercises, for example, this breathing technique, and also we can give, we can attribute some sensitive component. Try to do it out loud. You're yawning, you're sighing. Try to do it as if you get relaxed. Couple of times. Be loud. Like me. So it should be something that gives you some easiness, gives you some relief. You can yawn. Yawning is quite a good thing. It can be just get involved. And when you see that it's not very comfortable to be with other people when you are yawning, it's quite a natural thing. For example, when you think that it's not like very polite to yawn when there are other people here, here we see the conflict of social and biological body that under the stress conditions, 
should be resolved because person who do not have this con this conflict resolved they suffer a lot they are first candidates for panic disorders they are first candidates for compulsive reactions of stress and they can live through stress in one month second month but after a couple of months they go to depression responses but we need to know how we can get relaxed even if conditions of our lives say that there is no certainty but we should sleep it's necessary we should get relaxed and here we here include some soul spiritual sensitive component and your body helps you to understand where are these tensions in social or in, in in your body and we understand we understand what's better to be natural or to be comfortable for anybody and by the way you know in your program i have found this diagram of to be to be polite and to be sincere because it's really good because you shouldn't choose only one direction because here in body therapy we have our similar our similar approach that you shouldn't choose between your own dignity and desire for being close to anybody so i find it similar and we can allow us to unblock our body and to be sincere to be vivid we can find quite a comfortable way how not to maybe spoil relationship with other people in this process but as practice shows people who have this conflict resolved people who are natural who are emotional expressive not excessively expressive but naturally expressive it's really very comfortable to be with them because we understand that it's comfortable for us and polyvagal theory says that yes that's it when you create for yourself this security field you create it also for others and conversations about neural networks they also just creep into our psychotherapeutic reality there is our internal net that is in charge of our neural reactions but there are also some other networks that can be called reflective net neurons because we feel each other we react to each other it's inevitable and when i had a workshop many years ago i remember there were some contact exercises when two people look at each other and they just take note of each other's breathing and we understand that when we are looking at each other when we are looking at breathing each other we see a lot of different primary reactions because we need time we don't know where to put our hands what to do what to say etc and we need some time to become natural to breathe freely in front of other person and this polyvagal theory says that a lot of people live in this survival mode because this vagus nerve commands the survival mode and people just get used to it as it is okay ordinary and during psychotherapy we understand that mostly we do not contact with other people but we hide we impress we try to make other people aware of something and it's not security mode it is like attack or defend and we understand that our neural system is also under the command of this and sometimes we should learn how to artificially go to this security mode and on one pole of this polyvagal theory there is this war uh, mode like 
impress, do something for people, justify yourself, etc. This is one pole. On the other pole, there is natural and sincerity. One pole understand, think, decide, and the other pole fear. I can think, but I'm involved in this process with you. And regulators for these systems as analysis of our of our behavior and also our breathing, our voice. But what is comfortable for us? How can we measure this? I call it patterns, but we understand that patterns it is quite a very of, often used notion. So in breathing tools, we can see some neurot our neural patterns when we breathe more deeply, more for a long time, and uh, the body starts to react in different way. And this is our reactions to stress or freezing or tension, even if it's not necessary. And there can be also to become numb, then to speed up or just to switch off. And if you try breathing, like this, without pauses, in a very deep way, with relaxation of your neck, face, and all the body. In a couple of minutes, if you continue this breathing, you will understand that you or just decrease the range of your breathing, or you will just speed up your breathing, or you will just put this additional tension to it instead of relaxation. And these are the patterns, the habits of this insecure mode. That on the second pole, we relax, we make them contact. So tell me whether it is interesting for you. Do you see there are reactions? So it's okay, people like it, it's useful. Because I love this topic and it's really very comfortable to talk about it. So also, this is the understanding why we should do this exercise, why we should explain to client how to do it what to do it so this neurophysiology language is really very important and it's really very comprehensive uh -huh. i see i see that it is it is interesting for you so we can link our voice our mimics our breathing and the knowledge to regulate the state with the voice is really understated too. It is used only in hypnotherapy, but even in hypnotherapy, these, the voice isn't used to fullest extent because I had a couple of teaching projects and I found out that some experienced specialists, they do not know how to pass to this security mode. So they work, they work a lot but they do not, they help other people, but they cannot be themselves in their security mode. So this is very important because this capacity to create atmosphere, capacity to relax a client, capacity to heal when you are regulated, when you regulate your state, the atmosphere of your client, this is the voice. I found out that many students of mine, they, they know how to um, speak, how to talk in a quite low voice, but they do not know how to use the security mode. When, for example, when you talk very like in trance, but it is more related to the lower part of body of uh, vagus nerve but sometimes we should use the opposite and then we 
have to enliven and our security mode voice it's you know it's very spiritual atmospheric when you are talking about soul etc and then when i use this voice i see i see this change i see that you know the your face is softened we see our heart our face that are related by the upper branch of the vagus nerve and when you talk in such a mode security mode i give the signal to my heart that everything's okay everything's calm just get relaxed get rest there is security here and there is component of being in contact being involved not being in haste being emotional and this is what's interesting about security mode that's why yawning and sighing sometimes gives so powerful effect it's like emotional discharge and relaxation because you know some experience they give or 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 emotional discharge or relaxation for example uh, catharsis catharsis therapy is quite a painful and difficult one and we know that there are some trans practices but here what we're doing here it's quite something you know golden middle it's safe it's secure it's easy it's rapid we can do it with client we can teach our client how to do it and for example when we teach people how to sigh how to yawn we understand that there are some muscles that prevent doing it and we understand how our uh, body emotional shell related to the fact that we should be in control of our emotions we shouldn't get relaxed we shouldn't be open in front of other person and this is the topic that we can discuss also creating intellectual security for our clients please try it try it because you know i'm just jumping from one point to another uh, point etc so please if there are any questions please ask them i will be really happy to answer them try try this breathing try and then maybe you will find out some re reactions or maybe after recording you will find out some questions oh by the way there is a question so how to work with a person who is afraid of this breathing out with out loud well do not force this person you understand that of this concept this neurophysiological concept no violence we create safety and security and when we see that the person cannot do something we may have a step back and we just put our person with this physiological reaction that i understand it's difficult to do it i will help you so here it's really great moment when we can uh, explain what we hear what we listen and i say that it can be related to this or that or that and i ask my clients so is it this or is it that so i explain that this is quite a normal reaction on stress i do not force you i do not speed you up i just create conditions where you can unpack this feel this and sometimes i offer some interim exercise so i say that okay this is difficult exercise let's pass to another one or you can try it at home because you know when you are in front of other person it's more vulnerable for you but in this moment it's not about the fact that the person cannot do it but we understand that there is this stress resistance there is this mechanism and we should put up with this mechanism and i will teach you how to understand yourself because one of the main course of this of this neurosis is the fact that person starts to hate himself 
because of it, because there were no people who could accept this, these things. And sometimes I'm the first person who can say that uh, I understand you, it's okay. Okay, breathing delays. What can you tell about breathing delays? And also, Baroslava said that my mom sighs out loud. Yes, it's about emotional discharge, because in our culture we say that it depends, it uh, impacts others, and it's a bad thing, but if you can do it, it's okay. So if you like it, you know, you can just enjoy this sign. For example, during different workshops, I always say to uh, my listeners, so let's sigh with different intonation, intonations, like sigh 10 times in a row, and you will understand that, yes, it's difficult from one point of view, but from other point of view, you will find out that there is emotional dis uh, discharge, and it's easier to breathe in. You can give it different patterns, different voice, and you will unblock this shell between me and others, the fear in front of others and blocks. I just fill in my body and it gives me a couple of benefits. So I discharge myself emotionally. I get relaxed. My neural system comes from this survival mode in a normal one. I can forget about some considerations but also I teach my body that I'm okay together with my imperf imperfections and it's wonderful that we have it in this body therapy this opportunity to get access to feeling of the basic basic full value that i'm okay despite my success achievements and failures i'm okay with myself it's okay for me to be like this because body related therapy just returns us to these primary reactions about the adjustments adaptation that we need be comfortable for others etc yeah, and here we give you physical experience of security, that it is okay. Even if there are a lot of failures, even if there are imperfections, I'm okay. So, also, you can just switch off your camera if you do not feel comfortable and sigh. Just practice this sighing with different voice, with different intonations, do it, do it with your body, enjoy this sign. Here, Miroslav writes that sex is a natural mode of body psychotherapy to breathe, to sigh, to be with the other person. Yes, in sex sometimes we just get open, but Sometimes during sex, we can use our tensions and it motivates us to unpack ourselves. But it's not always works to do it through sex. Sometimes we need therapy. And one of the reasons why people who work with uh, um, breathing, they have very vivid sexual life because there is charisma, there is emotionality, attraction. It is related to the fact that we can just unpack ourselves, we can open ourselves. I mean, the breathing, breathing technique. Okay, Kata, please. Can you read? Can you read me the interesting, the interesting uh, moments? Yeah, because here there are no questions. There was only one question from Olha. How to work with a person who during the work says that he or she is, uh, starts to experience the headache. So have you had such cases? 
Yeah, we can return to stress reactions, how they are formed. Now, when we're talking about war, we do not talk about disorders. We talk about sensitivity, stress reactions, and vulnerabilities, because it's okay in such situation. We can be in disappointment, uh, in delusion. We can become restless. When the, uh, we cannot focus our attention, you know, very often from the very beginning, I explain that there is adaptation, war, movement to another country. It's okay. You cannot remember everything like in peaceful time at home. So we talked about tension, about restlessness, about switching off, that there are... Uh, and how these how his habits or how the lifestyle is attributed to the, to the habits is in charge of the habits so habits are in charge of lifestyle so when a person says i'm not in time to do this and that etc so this is like survival mode So we can we can have this, we can regulate these emotions, we can regulate these habits and how to live them through. And what we do when we perform this when we perform these exercises, we can understand what's going on. We can understand where, uh, whether we are apathic or where there is some other neurophysiology is involved. And we should understand the atmosphere that we create. We should understand what's going on. And very often when I breathe with a person who has a headache, I understand that I can step back a couple of steps because maybe I haven't seen that uh, two steps back maybe he was freezing or maybe he had some tension so what do I do I use my voice I say okay I validate his state I ask what's going on what are the emotions that rec that can be recognizable and I say that there is no pressure I will help you to relax and I explain that sometimes it can be just the distress reaction, you can see it in your body. When, for example, a person is like a guitar string, very tense, so he has to experience his headache because he loses the control. Or sometimes I see that, you know, there is this stock of of reserved of holding the tears for example if i breathe ahead i will just burst into tears so i explained that it's okay but there is this reaction that some people are ashamed of bursting into tears some people you can put them under threat when they burst into tears so you should understand it and you should explain them how to release these emotions and if we have this headache, I say that it's okay, I do not put pressure on you, this is a normal reaction of stress. And I give this idea that we can wait till it stops and I take this opportunity to tell about these reactions, about the reserved emotions. And very often when I talk about it, I am involved emotionally and they wo I work I you know like play on these various strings as on musical instruments and when I talk about this sense of helplessness for these clients I would say that sometimes yes sometimes there is this desire of bursting into tears and I will give a sigh and I with the sigh it will be like a hint how we can unblock this thing 
And we try to, even with our mirror reactions, we help this person to do some exercises, maybe to press feet uh, to the floor, etc., just to ground this person, to make this person aware of being here. And here we should shift the tension, tension. we should hold the contact and recognize the emotions and we should tell what are these emotions we should accept these emotions we should find out what are these emotions and with big variability from this pain headache we find the impulse to the healing and sometimes we see you know there is this quote that in each symptom we find then impulse to healing you know in this physical expressions of symptom there is a trial to to discharge for example in headache there is this trial to burst into tears tears or for example in anger there is that you cannot release and you can see it through micro reactions of the body And now we can meet it with approval, this system, and we can accept this system. The system that says us, look at me, see me, do not forget about me, accept me. And here we see the idea that each physical discomfort of body is emotion that we can express. And yes, the psychologist asks, what do you feel? Where is it in the body? Because when we find where is it in the body, we find out that this is emotional reaction, reserved emotional reaction that works to burst out. And this reaction maybe can just, wants just to be released. Yeah, so if there is headache, we need to step back for a couple of steps. Yeah, to use the soft voice to find the secure, to create the acceptance and secure atmosphere and discuss it. Like this is the headache, it can be this or that reaction to stress, maybe there is emotion, maybe there is, uh, there is emotion that your body um, is ashamed or is afraid to express this emotion so acceptance then denomination of the emotions re acknowledge these emotions and if we see the reaction we can give a hint how it is possible to release this so we shouldn't just you know only shout etc a person who has this tear stuck inside it's enough just to activate the muscles and to weep maybe <laughs> just to do it like this and breathing so breathe in this is the one mode and another mode is just to shift the attention and activate the bottom part so it's when you breathe out just press press your feet to the floor you can press also with your palms, your hips. It's like grounding technique. Or you can just choose the right voice for this feeling. And sighs, they can be quite natural. So when you feel this pain, try to sigh and to express through this sighing, this emotion. It can help. So these are like very general techniques and tools. But if a person says that he or she cannot we say yes i understand so there is such a reaction that we cannot unblock ourselves from the very beginning but we can try just breathing breathe out denominate what creates obstacle try to decrease the tension with the breathing i think it will be universal approach thank you so much and Olga says that I think it was really very useful. And there is another question. 
So what does it mean when a, when a person is yawning for quite a 20 minutes? Well, it's a good thing. It's cool. It means that there is a lot of tension and it just releases the stress. There are people who have this natural reaction and sometimes it works like psychological issue. For example, I have clients when you just touch to some sensitive issue, he or she starts yawning. And it's, it's okay. I say, okay, it's just discharge of tension. It's normal, it's good. It can be 20 minutes. It means that body needs it. The yawning decreases the stress and tension in the body. There is also balancing of acid and alkaline uh, parts. So there we manage the contents of oxygen and carbon dioxide in our body. And our body knows how to regulate all eat in our body. And for 20 minutes, we can understand that our body gets relaxed and sometimes we use it for desensibilization and we also try to do it. That there is symptom, there are uh, thoughts related to it and there is this cognition, the helplessness related to the situation. Well, we crystallize the symptom then, and after we do a cycle of breathing techniques just to process it. I mean, the same yawnings, etc. So we do a cycle and then, and you know, and we can uh, SUD measurement to do. SUD, this is subjective unit of stress. For example, when you think about it from zero to 10, what is your level now? One person says from the very begin, beginning that this is seven or eight, etc. And we ask the patient about it, the client, and then we do some breathing technique. And after the cycle of breathing technique, we again ask this SUD measurement. So what is the level of stress from zero to 10? And very often, this level decreases, and especially when we do a couple of cycles, there is more and more decrease. And we see that there is less helplessness, less fatality to different situations. Thank you. Thank you so much, Andrew. You know? I remember that you told us when you when you traveled in metropolitan in Kiev metropolitan, and you also taught people how to yawn properly in the trains of metropolitan. Yeah, you know, it was really cool. It was quite a joke, and they took some friends, some students, and yeah, we traveled. We traveled in Metropolitan and we started yawning and people started to yawn and they understand that, you know, it's it's not that it's artificial yawning and people started laughing and the tension decreased. So I think it was a really good thing. So if you yawn for 20 minutes in a row, it's okay for your body. If you understand that there is something wrong, then try to understand what is it. Because you know, some people think that well, it's not polite when you try to uh, when you start yawning, you can't stop, etc. So no, you should you should think about it. You should do it. You should continue yawning. You can prove that nothing bad happens when you yawn. And if there are some other reactions, yes, maybe there is something important. But physiologically, it's quite okay, and you can do it. Or sometimes you can find out that you are yawning because of something, for example, something that uh, scares you, something makes you tense, etc., etc. Then we should find out what's going on here. 
because after this yawning you can find out more calmly these reactions tell us please can we maybe pass to some other exercise because victoria for example asks some some spring spring spiral technique now it's quite a big topic thank you for reminding me this is from somatic coaching it's more about concepts that can be used but and they work very good but you know it's quite a it needs quite a long time for teaching it I think that maybe I will provide some webinars, but closer to autumn. And he, now I would like to say that you can find out all my materials. Uh, Andrew Fleschel, this is my name, surname. You can find the different so, uh, social networks. I am on Instagram. In Facebook, I also have some materials and YouTube. In YouTube, I have a lot of things and Flashlight 4, this is my website. You can write me, you can ask a lot of different materials. They are free. They are sets of different uh, practices and algorithms, protocols, etc. with the monosymptoms. And also some sets from anxiety, psychosomatic reactions to some internal inner conflicts and procrastination. So you can write me, you can request these materials. You can find me in Telegram. Flashel, you just write Flashel and you will find Flashel psychology and, co and coaching and you can write me. And there is also my group that I have started from the very beginning, from the full scale outbreak of war. And now there are more than 800 people. So these were people who came to different Zoom meetings when there were meetings on uh, self-assistance. And also there were crisis psychology course, how to help properly in these situation that adapted to the war with all the nuances that are really very important for psychotherapists and volunteers or coaches so it can be done you can request these materials so there is a group in uh, telegram where i posted a lot of different materials and there you can find also different strategies, techniques, how to use these algorithms. Because here, you know, there are a lot of different different exercises. It's not very structured. That's why I tell about everything. Yeah, I will send you the link for the Telegram channel. Yeah, yeah, I know it. I will send the link in chat. Yeah, and then you can post me different questions. I will answer you everything. It will be there. And today also we will introduce some other exercise. So are there any questions here? Maybe we can do it. No, there are questions about future, about future webinars, etc. And I will send the links in the chat and then i think all these questions will be posted to you yeah i'm reading what is there in the chat yeah so this is we have already addressed the uh spring method we have already discussed yeah. And what topic would you like to have now? And then, so what topic should we choose? And then maybe, maybe about recovery. 
something on recovery because now this topic is very decent about self-recovery a kind of practice or exercise so as i feel it can be really very interesting maybe you have some other ideas please suggest them okay now all these techniques they can be used also for recovery and it gives you know it will give you not some recovery tools but it will give some you know favoring to your um, body to the nature to recover yourself okay recovery is about breathing because breathing is really emotional this is our energy so again think deeply breathe in deeply but breathe out you know like as if you are sighing with relief so breathe in deeply breathe out with relief out loud so breathe in as if you try to extend your spine your back you just string it out and when you breathe out you relieve this tension as if you breathe in you try to feel yourself in with the desire to regenerate to recover and when you breathe out you just let it go everything and your breathing reflects the laws of neurophysiology you can continue you continue it this breathing and about the pauses when we are breathing this habit of fighting something is reflected in our breathing and our breathing says us that it's impossible if you want to get open to something new you should unblock your attention you should let it go everything that is old so maybe yawning will help you try also to pull yourself a bit backwards while yawning yawn and then sigh so recovery is about revival revival is about listening to yourself feeling yourself this is about mindfulness but from the neurophysiology it's very easy you physically understand feel what's going on with you what's pleasant what is related to the fact that there are your desires to to recover you understand this enlargement you know you feel this enlargement as if you become bigger you feel in yourself you ground yourself you strengthen yourself and it's like intuition you see just i said to have this reflex position of my body i just push i just push my back uh, my hips and my foot and my feet towards the ground so i breathe in and breathe out i breathe and feel so try to to do it for 10 20 times without this tension of your neck so as if you know as if your head is not in a stable position so breathing fully get relaxed and everything that you feel inside try to let it go to shift it to feel it like an energy do this and it can be you know like passionate breathing it can be out loud that your vocal cords can be involved it can be i don't know passionate erotic intimate as you wish 
just breathe in and breathe out. Breathe in, breathe out. And do it unless you have some, you know, special effects, for example, some dizziness, etc. And if these reactions do not provoke any fearful re reactions, continue. Do it without pauses. Try to relax all the parts of the body that are tightened. During relaxation, make your body plastic, flexible. Feel as if you are filled in. You see that you are enlarged. Your back is, is enlarged. Your diaphragm is enlarged. And yes, regeneration is related to this security feeling. And maybe innocence, some primary innocence. To forget about things, about some issues. Be easygoing without any troubles. And we can bring in there some inspiration because you know in all the languages inspiration is related to breathing and when you want to leave all the hard things backwards breathe breathe and give the sense of enlargement of your bones, of your muscles, as if you are, you are having wings, as if you want to fly, as if you want to hug somebody, as if you want to uncover yourself towards the heaven. And if you breathe with your heart area, everything that is related to the heart tries to enliven. And our heart is related to our security directly and please do it through three five six cycles and try to understand try to fix these reactions so you breathe in as if you are as if you have uh, exercising with bow and arrow so you are preparing to push the arrow and you push the arrow without any big efforts. Also use some yawns, some sighs, continue. You can do it in two, three cycles, you can do it in ten cycles. So just do it to enliven yourself and everything you feel, some strange thinks these are patterns of the energy. These are tensions that are in ourselves. These are held emotions that ask us to, to release them. You can tremble, you can say it out loud, you could express in different, um, different voices, get inspired. Feel, feel as if as if your diaphragm, your thorax just get enlarged or as if you are going, you are coming into in a cold water when from one point of view it's really good sensation, from other point of view it's like, you know, very strange sensation. So be sensitive, feel it, easy going, outgoing natural as babies as children if it is too much for you you can ask me a question or you can yawn or you can sigh and when you sigh just release release all the tension everything that you do not like just sigh sigh it out try not to make pauses Okay, pauses and breathing. Why? In our practices, there are a lot of integrations without pauses. Because pauses, they reflect our habits, how to freeze. Pauses 
show us these reactions of freezing. All our neurotic systems, 95% of them, they are about freezing of breath. That's why if we do not give us ourselves possibility to freeze, we unblock our neuroplasticity, our movement, our flexibility. So we do it to enjoy, to make our body plastic, flexible, to find out our tensions, our holds, to make them flexible. And then when we breathe out, we ground ourselves and we get relaxed. Yeah, and when we are afraid, we also get used to live with such adjustments. And when we breathe without pauses, we return our natural mode as being child. We unblock the muscles that are responsible for freezing. So we again become very vivid, very natural, very sensitive. And your physiology says that being live, being spontaneous is quite a good thing. From this state, we can construct best, best body context. But neurosis is based on the fact that if I'm not like sophisticated, I won't be comfortable and people will break up with me. But people who are not understandable, they are uncomfortable. But people who are expressive, they attract other people. If we understand what these people have in their life, these people in life, other people, and even those people who get angry because of this attractive person, they, they are attracted to them also. So you can trace all these reactions. But we also explain that some people, some people should, should be more acceptable, should have this language in a more acceptable way. I'm not sure that this is what you asked for, but I decided to continue this topic. So, if there are any questions, write it, write them. If I'm not in time to answer the questions, I will answer you in the in my chat. So, I am planning to launch two courses for those people who want self-regulation and people who want to work with other clients. This is the breathing and uh, neurosomatic therapy and coaching. So both programs are directed for regulation of neural system to cope with stress reactions and also to work with some neurotic systems and also there are some protocols etc so these programs are adjusted like how to provide different techniques and also some some strategies how to heal how to recover both yourself and your patients so this is breathing neurosomatic therapy and coaching so who is interested please write me about it. Katerina has already sent you the link, so you can send me the message in the Telegram. You can also ask some materials for the topics that I have said about, because I see that there are a lot of different materials and a lot of them are free of charge. Articles, techniques, protocols, work with clients, Resistant clients, all these topics have already been covered, so you can just request the 
materials about them. And if people would like to join to these programs, please write me. Oh, yoga, breathing pauses, there is the question. So, breathing delays, well, breathing in and breathing out, by the way. So, there is two more uh, breathing adjusted by Winhoff. I use them also for neurosis. So, yes, we use these delays of breathing. They have big potential. When we work with breathing delays, we create, we work with the effect of Abora, Christopher Abora, this is physiologist, this has a very versatile effect that changes the uh, measure of hemoglobin and then we have some effects when there is interval hyper -vent ventilation there is also very big effect it gives us uh, self resistance very fast switching from some provocative issues it is one of the very fast methods but in classical variant it can provoke some very unpleasant feelings. That's why there is video format of uh, with instructions about the safety techniques, how to use it. For example, if there are some post-traumatic uh, reactions, please at first ask for advice whether you can do it for yourself or not. Yes, delays for breathing in and breathing out. Yes, there are a lot of uh, a, a lot of different effects. This is reprocessing of thoughts. This is deep calmness. And there are a couple of types of these delays that can be used for to unblock the tense muscles. And they also help to how to cope with the breathing. I talked about breathing without pauses. This is because there is an aim. For example, you know, breathing is used as universal method very often, but I understand that this is not the universal method because it depends on client, it depends on aim. You can use different techniques, different tools, not only one of them. If during my webinars or seminars I use only one range of exercise it's because these are universal things but also i correct it because there are some nuances in each case but i think that i will record a separate video about the delays in breathing and about the safety technique because these delays sometimes can be with some bad physiological effects well, I would say that all powerful elements, they have side effects and breathing is quite a powerful effect and it can provoke a uh, traumatic vortex when a person has um, internal drama on the suppressed emotions and when we just uncover these mechanisms, there can be deteriora deterioration of his state. So that's why we should be careful how to use these methods. I mean, different breathing techniques and some other techniques that are used to change your awareness state. And you see that in each, in each of these uh, techniques that I have showed you, they can change your awareness. And you can think what can happen if you, for example, do it for 10, 20 minutes it will be even better. So, for example, if there is inclination to dissociation, it also can provoke something. You know, it can just advance some instruments from one point of view or for a recovery, but from other point of view, they can do some harm. 
That's it. Thank you for your good words that I see in the chat. And I see that we run out of time already. Yeah, it was very fast flying time because we switched on our parasympathetic parasympathetic uh, system. And the question, is there anybody who feels bad after breathing? Just tell us about it. So, if there are some negative effects of this breathing, please write me or write to Katerina. Because it can happen. There can be some things, some negative effects. Because I, I always ask, like, for example, are there any... Are there any negative effects? Because when I ask, some people said that yes, there were some negative effects and we learned how to deal with them. Yeah, this is also very good that we can do it even online. I can't even imagine how it is offline. Thank you. Thank you so much for this process. It was really very interesting. Because, you know, we were prepared for one format, but we had to change it. And it also it is a kind of stress also for you, because it was really unexpected. But we created... But we created something very new. Yeah. It's, it's about resource, that the stress can become a resource. And I also would like to say that Andrew Fleschel is a person who can change the atmosphere around just because of his presence. So we see that it was really very wonderful meeting today. Thank you, Andrew. I understand that. We will stay in touch after our meeting. Yeah. Thank you. I have to run. Thank you so, to all the colleagues. So please join our group, join our meetings. We will stay in touch and we will meet next month with the next topic about the body and emotional support. And by the way, we will have this Solas day. This is the most active time. That's why it's really very important topic was for today that we can get prepared for this solace time. Yeah, this is like transformation, natural transformation. Okay, take care. Have a nice day. Take care. Bye. See you next time.